Let's talk about concussions and other traumatic brain injuries, or TBIs, and how they can affect learning today. I chose this particular topic as it's very personal to me. I had a series of concussions several years ago and I find I am still encountering issues today. As an unseen injury, it's amazing how impactful it can be on your life, affecting everything from sleep to memory to emotions. A concussion is an invisible injury to the brain caused by something as simple as a good bump or a jolt to the head. Your brain swirls around inside and bumps against your bony skull. When concussed, the brain has to work much harder than usual to complete tasks. Don Newman, PhD, and Anthony Lecarica, PhD, in collaboration with the Model Systems Knowledge Translation Center, wrote an article called Cognitive Problems After Traumatic Brain Injury and talked about how wide-ranging a traumatic brain injury is on a person's life. They spoke about areas that could be affected by the injury. Let's quickly summarize. Paying attention and concentration are important when you are trying to learn something being easily distracted, having difficulties remembering, learning new information, or focusing on conversations will all seriously impair your ability to learn and retain information. Processing and understanding information issues show up as not being able to follow instructions or understand what people are saying. Reaction time is slower and takes longer to do physical tasks. Sensitivities to light and sound are common. Cognitive issues or memory show up as rambling thoughts, being easily distracted, lack of organization, or an inability to read social cues and act or react appropriately. Learning and remembering are also affected. The issue could be forgetting single words or entire events or conversations. The brain tries to fill in the missing information with things that may not have happened, using the memories that are there and can be recalled. These are called false memories. Planning and organization helps learners accomplish goals or organize their thoughts. When affected by a TBI, the learner would have difficulty organizing their day and scheduling their appointments. Losing items like assignments, paperwork, and car keys would be some telltale signs. Judgment, reasoning, problem solving, and self-awareness are all classified as complex cognitive skills. A person with a TBI could have problems with analyzing information, making decisions, or acting without thinking. Worse yet, the learner may not even realize they're having these problems until the issues are pointed out to them. And even then, sometimes they don't recognize any issues. How could these issues with a TBI affect how I teach in a classroom? First, I need to show compassion and understanding when a student mentions they have a TBI. TBI is an invisible injury, so the only way I will know is if the student shares that information with me. The learner will likely need extensions on assignments. I might have to review assignments in detail to create detailed to-do lists of what needs to be done, when, and in what order. I should initiate this conversation as the learner may not even recognize they need help. Break assignments into smaller, more manageable pieces and remove some of the busy work to lessen the mental load for the learner. I might even share my teaching notes of the most important portions of lessons with the learner so that they can focus on those parts. I would check with the learner more frequently to see how they are coping. This could be a daily, is there anything we should review again? Or how are your headaches today? We might have to dim lights in the class if we are in a classroom setting or have a separate quiet area for the learner to take quizzes or work on assignments. In sports and school, there's a return to play, return to learn playbook that many follow. It lists several phases of re-entry to sports or school and could easily be adapted for work scenarios. I would use those phases of re-entry in my classroom for any students returning from a concussion. I really like the checklist for evaluating resources from Molly Bistrom called the CRAP test. It has a couple of questions to answer to, de to determine if a resource is a credible and valid source. My question review is as follows. Currency. The page was copyrighted in 2020 and does not seem to have any other dates on it. It seems to be relatively static information, not needing frequent updating. Reliability. The website has a lot of information regarding spinal cord injuries, traumatic brain injuries, and burn injuries. It seems relatively balanced with the understanding that the authors are specifically writing about the side effects of these injuries. At the end of the article, there are seven other articles cited, all circling back to other articles on the MSKTC website. They also reference external sources that have reviewed and approved the content. Authority. 
Both authors are PhDs and have worked in collaboration with the National Institution on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehab Research, Administration for Community Living, U.S. Department of Health and Human Sources, and are financed under grants. There doesn't seem to be advertising on the website and no calls to use their services. Purpose and point of view. It appears the website collects current research information, publishes articles and technical reports, and translates them into easy to understand knowledge bases for patients and their families. It appears to be knowledge providing only and has no services to sell, short of signing up for their newsletter. Here are the resources that I referenced in order to create this presentation.